Anthony, Joe Tessitore, and Teddy Atlas welcoming you to the famed New York Arena here in Midtown Manhattan for a much anticipated main event. 12 rounds in the heavyweight division between these two great warriors. He's making his way to the ring now, and you can see how focused he is on the task at hand. George Foreman's focus is front and center as he makes his way to the ring right now. Guys, remember this. Obey my commands at all times. Now let's have a good, clean fight. Catch him up. This is a 12-rounder. Here's round number one. Well, there's one fighter here, as we've seen time and time again, that just doesn't have the physicality. He doesn't have the overall strength against his opponent. But what does he have? Well, he has the greatest muscle that the human body has, the brain muscle. Use it. Be smart. Give angles. Get out. Keep your opponent off balance. If he's bigger and stronger, he needs a certain kind of set position to use that. Do not give that to him. Well-placed counterpunch by bad intentions. Consecutive shots. Well done by George Foreman. George Foreman's swelling will have to be dealt with immediately. I guess it's already a sign of things to come. They are not wasting any time toe-to-toe -to -toe in round one. If this is an appetizer, please, please, bring on the meal. Fires right back at him. Very nice job landing that counter punch, getting away from one that was coming at him. How is this strategy of employing the jab time and time again going to pay off for him? Well, it's going to be kind of like, you know, when you put your kids to sleep, you know? You get a little peace and quiet. <laughs> He's going to be left alone. He's not going to be bothered. He's not going to have a headache if he uses his jab. Nice block by bad intentions. <laughs> and he returns on that exchange. Holy cow! Oh, he is absolutely affected by that no right holding. hand. Never saw it coming. Worst kind of right hand you can catch. He should tie up here. Bad Intentions is doing a good job there. He has a great sense of his identity. He knows he's got a fight on the outside, and creating that space is the way to do it. Last 10 seconds of this first round. Blocks that belt line well. So we come to the end of the round. And clearly a confidence booster for this man. He got to his opponent. He was able to stun him. Teddy, when a fighter comes back after doing what he just did, do you see them almost light up, like get a little boost of energy because of that? Yeah, it does build your confidence a little bit. You know, it makes you feel more secure. I can control this man. I had my way. You have to keep your distance. Stay away from it. Keep throwing that jab. Back to fight action 
as a new round is underway. Of course, in that last round, it was fairly one-sided. He was hit pretty hard, and now he has to overcome that here. Yeah, you don't have to be Notre Dame to know that. I mean, everybody saw, you know, he got staggered, his knees buckled, did a little dance there. But what you have to really know now is know why you got hit and correct that immediately. How about that exchange? So swiftly able to turn defense into offense. Nice counter punch. And what you're noticing here is his opponent is starting to be a little wary of letting his jab go because every time he jabs, he gets caught. Big George Foreman originally from Marshall, Texas, whereas a youth, Teddy, he was involved in a lot of street fights, I and mean, he had a reputation as the kind of guy that he didn't mess with out and about. You know, we've had a lot of fighters that have come out that route. Boxing has saved, has turned a lot of young men who were in trouble on the streets, turned them into not only world champions, but, you know, world champions as people, people that can serve society. Foreman is one of those young men. Good block there by bad intentions. And there's the left hand working well for him again. wanted the body, he wouldn't give it to him. Well done that time, landing the counter punch. Foreman's strategy coming in was to land a lot of jabs. Teddy, you got a great amount with an A here. Maybe even an A plus, Joe. That plus is the right hand. Once the jab has been there, bang, the right hand came just when it was supposed to. Give him an A plus. defense starting to be costly now you can see that swelling yeah and you know the first thing you think about is he's going to get back to his corner they're going to put that end swell on it but he needs to get better defensively make sure that it doesn't get worse coming to the end of this round joe and teddy with you ringside teddy a round like that where it's a lot of busy activity and both guys being busy when you were a trainer are those the kind of rounds that you prefer, or do you like the pace to be a little slower? Does it depend on each guy? No, if I have a fighter, I'd rather have a guy fighting a guy that you never see him. <laughs> Leave me the heck alone, and where I'm in control all the time. Hey. But the fans love to see a fight like that. And round number three is underway. Good counterpunch. <laughs> Now they're opening up. Both right hands land. Able to get rid of that one. Combination to the head. Teddy, do you think the sport needs a national or international governing body? Yeah, it's the only major sport, at least it used to be a major sport, that doesn't have that. And there's no unilateral control. And when there's no unilateral control across the board, well, you have too many spots, spots that are weak for the sport, spots that do not serve the sport. Good block by George. Bad intentions is now in a position where he may not even realize it, but the eye is getting worse. Still, he fights on. He behaves like a fighter. 
And that's the greatest asset you have. It's not your jab, it's not your hook, it's not your power, it's not your footwork. It's your ability to behave like a fighter when you have to. She's doing that right now. She's got that quick trigger, that little double jab there. Boom, boom. Nice block by bad intentions. Shot again. How is he able to do this? How is he able to take these shots? You know, one time Muhammad Ali talked about taking a chin. He had one of the great chins of all time. And what he basically talked about was that when you start to get hit those shots, you start to go down a hallway. And then you go into a gray room. You go from a light room to a gray room. And at the end of the hallway, you see a dark room. You don't want to go to that dark room. And you have a choice. You put your feet down and you start backing up. I'm not going to that dark room. This guy is not being taken to that dark room. Ten seconds to go in this round. Nice block by Foreman. Lands the counter. We come to the end of this round. Teddy, a round in which maybe a lot of trainers don't like to see because it was a very busy round for both guys. Well, it depends what kind of style, what kind of strength your fighter has or even what kind of weaknesses. If I had a guy who likes to box, who likes to counter punch, I want a guy coming at him. Not with a lot of TNT in his gloves, but coming forward where my guy is well suited. He can pick him off a little bit. Well, he took one right there, but then he targeted one right back. Good block. Very nice defensive guard there. Lands flush with the combination upstairs. There are different kinds of power punchers, Teddy. Some are sharp and accurate. Some are thudding and impactful. Where does George Foreman lie on that scale? A bludgeoning tight puncher. A guy that you have a headache for about a week. He hits you with such stunning punches that it starts to just break you down as time goes on. But either way, he intimidates you with the force of the punch, with the effect of the punch, and the knowledge that he's in front of you with that ability. Keep your hands up. Keep it going. <laughs> Able to block that away, it was targeted for his head. That hook over, but couldn't turn it into a connect. Lands the counter. We come to the end of the round. A round that I'm having a tough time trying to think about who won. I can only imagine what the judges are thinking about. Teddy, if there's one thing you look for in a round like that and say, okay, I'm going to give it to this guy over this guy, what is it? Well, the first thing is 
If I'm a judge, I'd take a little notepad and I'd make a little mark down blue and red corner what he did early. Because sometimes a judge has a tendency to forget what was done early and only go with what went late. I would assume there has to come a point in this fight where he has to make the commitment to throw the power punches. It's hard to envision a way he's going to win this fight without going down that road. He doesn't have the confidence to do it. I don't know if he's mentally strong enough to do it. I think he's worried about throwing hard at the guy because maybe in his mind that means the guy will throw hard back at him. And now we got a fight. He fires back a right hand of his own. Able to defend and then go on the offensive. It is unbelievable how this fight is being fought. Both guys unwilling to stop. One guy goes at it, the other guy meets him punch for punch. Well, you've heard it before. You've heard the term used one day at a time to deal with something very difficult. Well, this is one round at a time. That is the only way these fighters, these warriors, could deal with this kind of pace. Halfway into round number five here. Good block by bad intention. George Foreman, of course, took part in one of the most famous fights of all time, the Rumble in the Jungle. What could he have done differently to have changed that outcome? Nothing. Ali got into his head. That Ali made him believe that he could not beat him. That Ali made him believe that he had to submit. Because for years after that, days and hours and years, he had to deal with the knowledge that he gave in to a guy who was more together mentally than he was. What a fight. What a great, great non-stop action fight this has been. He took a shot, but he came back with a right hand of his own. Protecting his head well with his guard. Coming to the end of round number five, last ten seconds. Good block by bad intentions. This has been a hotly contested war throughout, and you just have a sense that it's going to end at any moment in these later rounds. Yeah, these guys are not saving anything. They're going for broke right from the beginning. Oh, very nice. Smart counterpunch there. Yeah, that's beautiful. You make the guy miss, you make him pay. <laughs> intended for the head. And you see he turned defense into offense, comes back with the counterpunch. And that's exactly what he brings to the game. He makes you miss, he makes you pay, and he makes you think twice about throwing a punch later on. to dismiss his opponent's shot and then comes back with an uppercut.
thought he had quite a chance tonight, but I don't like what I see right now. Here he is, an outside fighter, and he's unable to do as he pleases. And if he can't win on the outside, we already found out that he can't do it on the inside. Frustrating his opponent with great defense. And now a little combination punching, landing both shots. Oh, a nice two-punch combo by Bad Intentions. And this round comes to an end. A round that was highly entertaining. They put forth a non-stop effort. Well, that's the styles that they figured to bring to this fight. Both guys with good motors. Keep the pressure. You're fighting his rhythm, okay? Don't fight his fight. Let's get on that swelling. Put the compress on that. Six rounds in the books, six to go. There's a taste of the sweet science. You see the skill he has in counter punching. And you know what he's doing? He's taking his opponent's jab away. Foreman's ability to utilize this jab, fighting on the outside, has been so critical in what we've seen on the scorecards so far. Why so, Ted? Because it's not a common jab. You know, he reminds me, believe it or not, of Hector Camacho, the former junior lightweight champion, because he throws a trip hammer jab. You know, usually you turn that jab over, you know, counterclockwise, but he doesn't turn it over. He just drops it down. It just drops straight down. There's no warning, and boy, it's been landing. He's just not concentrating on the body as a target here, Teddy. No, and, you know, you wouldn't mind if he didn't have to. In other words, it all depends on the scenario. This scenario says that he should be going to the body, and he should recognize that. And that's part of the talent of a fighter, recognition, that you have to recognize where the opportunities are. one of those moments where you just wish you could pick up the phone and call up the world and say tune in everybody should be watching this right i have a cell phone i might do that right now <laughs> start dialing that worked out really well throwing off the right hand after getting tagged like that so swiftly able to turn defense into offense nice counter punch and what you're noticing here is his opponent is starting to be a little wary of letting his jab go, because every time he jabs, he gets caught. And now he's putting his punches together. There he goes. Way to block there. to dismiss his opponent's shot and then comes back with an uppercut. Good looking counter punch. Targeted counter punch by bad intentions. Listen, you need to move your head from side to side, okay? I want to see that head move. 
Teddy, what do you think here as we start this round? I mean, you watch what he did in that last round, and you got to think that he can get himself back into this fight. Well, that's how he's got to be thinking it. That's kind of what he's made up of. He's not a front runner. You know, he's not a fast starter anyway. He's the kind of guy that his real strength is to be able to weigh you down, to have a great resolve, and to be able to chip away, chip away. He's chipped. up nicely gets rid of his opponent's body shot wow is he defensively sound very nice work from both men they each got a shot in Comes in again, landing well. <laughs> Dismisses his opponent's headshot. Had his eyes set on the uppercut, but was unable to land it. Good stuff in the opening two minutes. A minute to go in this round. Just sit back and enjoy this one. You can tell both guys are so determined to give everything they have here tonight. So it's like the first time you heard Ray Charles sing God Bless America. You knew it was special. You knew you hadn't heard it before. I haven't seen anything like this before. He took a shot, but he came back with a right hand of his own. No, Teddy, it just feels like one of those nights, one of those fights where somebody's getting hurt, where this is not going to the judges' scorecards. I feel like I'm in Coney Island watching one of those hot dog eating contests where somebody's going to try to eat 50 of them, 60 of them. In other words, he's not worried how he's going to feel at the end of the night. with an uppercut. Good block by George. How 
love that exchange. He took a shot, but he gives one of his own. A left hand scores. What a great round. Two minutes in, 60 seconds to go. Defensive skill. And you see he turned defense into offense, comes back with the counterpunch. And that's exactly what he brings to the game. He makes you miss, he makes you pay. And he makes you think twice about throwing a punch later on. And there he counters back against his opponent. They start up again, back to action here with another round. But who knows how much longer it'll last. This has been a completely one-sided fight. George Foreman blocks that punch. Blocked by George. A headshot blocked. Job to land that counter punch and getting away from one of his own by bad intentions. I think it has come to that point. He's behind on the cards. He's just got to be. Going to take a knockout to win this? Yeah, I think so. And it's going to take a certain kind of attitude or strategy, a change in strategy. You go into the fights, you don't look for a knockout. You're looking to use your jab. You're looking to set up punches. You're looking to go rounds. Right now, he's got to find a way to get a knockout. Look for one punch. One big punch right now. Some fine fundamentals. Good counter punch. Nice mousetrap there. He let him in beautifully. He didn't use cheese. He used distance. <laughs> Keeping his hands up, getting away of his opponent's effort. Gets rid of that body shot. He said he was going to do it from the outside, and now he has. He just got to his man. His opponent had no idea that he was still in range. He thought he was at a safe distance. Now he knows he wasn't. George Foreman blocks that punch. This has been a hotly contested war throughout, and you just have a sense that it's going to end at any moment in these later rounds. Yeah, these guys are not saving anything. They're going for broke right from the beginning.
intentions is just not showing me enough offense right now. He's, I mean, I understand he did get hurt earlier. Yeah, he did. But he still has to put something forth. Yeah, he does. It's kind of like that kid who gets his hand caught in a cookie jar. You know, <laughs> you're not going to give up eating cookies. You still have a sweet tooth. You want to still go back and get that snack. You better find another way. He needs to find another way. Not able to land the uppercut. Getting it done with that straight right hand. Oh, and he comes back with an uppercut there after getting hit. Unbelievable work there landing a four-punch combo. Takes one, gives one. The right hand scores well. Able to get away from that headshot with the block. What a great, great, non-stop action fight this has been. One minute to go in a round that feels like an all-time classic. Punch for punch, they're beating each other. Keeps his hands up defensively, protecting the head. Lands the counter. think the right time is to stop a fight under circumstances like this. I mean, the swelling around the eye is getting really bad. Well, part of it is he getting caught with punches clean that he wouldn't be getting caught with if the eye wasn't in that condition. That's where you start right there. Is his defense been impaired that much to that degree? Able to defend and then go on the offensive. Good shape. He could be on the deck in moments. No holding. Big block by Big George. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. Norman's got a way of just getting away from that punch. That's a good block by bad intentions. How about that exchange? by bad intentions. It's been two minutes of non-stop action. Now the final minute has arrived.
Good block. There it is! George Foreman stunned and he is hurt. So far tonight, he was being completely Punch outworked, it out. but it out. now we see him being more the aggressor. Ball was starting to get a little late. He understood he needed to change things a little. You can see there's blood on his cheek. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. George Foreman blocks that punch. And for the official judges' scores, let's send it up to the ring. George Foreman's your winner by unanimous decision tonight. I'm not so sure it was unanimous. I had it a little bit close. I had a split decision.